Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today I'm going to talk about everything that you'll need to get started in your medicine cabinet. So creating your medicine cabinet because it's Medicinal Friday. So guys, first up, I want to remind everybody that we are doing our 10K giveaway, so make sure you subscribe and then head over to IG and follow Mighty Crop, and then leave a comment because that will enter you into our 10K giveaway. You'll get an entry for every single comment that you leave, and we are giving away a $50 gift card, a Mighty Crop system, and also a seed organizer. So fun giveaway, and every day I feel like we're getting closer and closer to it. So let's talk about getting your medicinal cabinet started because I have gotten a lot of questions of okay I have the herbs that are I'm starting to get in and I just want to know pretty much what are all the things that I need to really get my cabinet started. So we're going to talk about that today. So guys first this is my medicinal cabinet. Pretty proud of it. I have been working hard on it to make sure I have everything I need to kind of really make sure I can ensure family's safety, safety and health. So the very first thing I would recommend to you guys when you are preparing your medicinal cabinet and trying to decide what things you want to put in it is education. <laughs> so I have three books that I recommend and I will have everything that I'm recommending today linked down below. But I have Rosemary Gladstar's um, herbal medicine book. I have herbal antibiotics and herbal virals, or herbal antivirals. Um, it's really, really important that you know what these herbs do and how these herbs can affect you, how they need to be mixed and matched, and what you can use to treat what. That is very, very important. So if that's something that you don't already know, you know, learning about the herbs is a great way, but also having your own reference, so your own book that you can go back to, reference for when you need to make a recipe, reference for when you need to say, okay, well, what does this herb do or what is this herb good for? Those things are important because some herbs are mild and some herbs are really, really powerful, meaning if you take too much of them, that can affect liver, it can affect kidney, it can affect all these different things. And also, I'd want to say if you guys are on medications or anything like that, consult your doctor 100% and then learn how your medications are interacting with the different herbs and maybe how you can maybe take a couple of herbs and replace maybe some of the medications that you're on. Because pretty much most of the Western medicines are derived from herbs. So if you find the root of what it's derived from, then you can be able to solve a lot of the problems that you might have if they're not too severe. The next thing you're going to need are actual herbs. <laughs> so I do highly suggest everybody grow their own herbs because then you know where they came from, you know that there's nothing sprayed on them, you know that they're safe because when you're getting herbs the one thing you want to make sure make sure you know is that it's grown organically, it's grown in a place that isn't in a downwind of pesticides or anything like that because these are your medications. So the last thing you want are medications surrounded by different things that are going on in that growing process. So if you don't have your own herbs already growing in your garden or you can't fit the million <laughs> <laughs> of roots and herbs and stems and twigs and weeds that you could be using for medicine or they just don't grow in your climate. I get mine from Amazon and I use a brand called Star West. Um, Star West Botanicals. So that's where I like to get the majority of my herbs from. There are some that I get from other YouTubers that I can watch how they grow their gardens and I hear how they grow them and I love that about being able to be in that community and even Instagrammers, which I'll tag two that I like to get herbs from. Um, one from Instagram, one from YouTube. But if you're just ordering them in the masses, um, Star West has really good prices and they have really good organic herbs, which is important that you want to make sure that they are organic. Remember guys, these, this is your medicine. 
So the next thing you're gonna need is something to store your herbs in. <laughs> now, I love to use mason jars. I have clear mason jars, like I have this marigold going in, and then I also have amber mason jars for my tinctures. Now, I wanted to show you guys my lemon balm tincture that we made in one of the other Medicinal Friday videos. This is what it's looking like. So that pure vodka is now an amazing lemon balm tincture. And all I am is just straining it, straining the herbs off of it. And once these herbs are strained, then I can go ahead, compost these herbs, and then put this beautiful, amazing tincture into an amber bottle. Now, I like to use the amber com colored bottle because it keeps out all of the uh, light and I think that it's better for my tinctures and my extracts because it makes them last longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and strain this into this and get it all nice and ready. So since I have another jar of lemon balm tincture because I wanted to make a bunch of it, I thought I'd show you guys. So this is what it looks like now that it's ready to be strained. It's completely infused. Um, it's been about a week, actually eight days it's been. And so I'm gonna go ahead and all I'm going to do is just take it and pour it through my strainer. Now I'm going to let this sit. I'm not going to push it through or anything like that. I'm just going to let it sit and strain on its own. Um, I wanna make sure I don't get any like leaves or anything like that in there. So that's why I'm not going to worry about trying to push it through or anything like that. You can use just a regular strainer or you can use cheesecloth as another good thing or a tea towel works too as well um, to just strain out those herbs. But don't try and force them through anything because you don't wanna get any little leaf bits in there. So now let's talk about what you're gonna to need to administer these amazing herbs that you have grown yourself, are sourced locally, are sourced through an organic way, and now you have them in your cabinet and ready to go. Now are you going, how are you going to administer them? Now some herbs, like lemon balm, you can throw that in just some water and steep it, and it is amazing to drink on its own. So some of my favorite little steepers are just going to be uh, just the round tea ball or, and this one is reusable, or I like to use this one too as well, which is just a little steeper that you just put your herbs inside in and then just set this on your, um, your teacup. Now some herbs are great on their own and some herbs are a little harsh. Like I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to sit down to a nice warm glass of just burdock tea. So I like to mix it into something. So one of the things that I do suggest is having a couple of mix-in herbs in your cabinet. So herbs that just taste good on their own. Regular mint is one of them, just like a peppermint or a spearmint. They do have their own qualities that they provide for you, but they're really good with masking a lot of really harsh flavors. Um, passion fruit is another good one that I like. Green tea is one that I like, and then also lemongrass is another one that I like. So these help you to be able to get down some of those less desirable herbs that have really good benefits, but you know, who wants a giant cup of feverfew by itself? Not great. <laughs> the other thing I would say with that is getting yourself some type of sweetener. So staying away from just like pure white sugar is going to be better for your body and making sure that you can process it i like to use either a locally sourced honey i use locally sourced honey just because local bees use local pollen which does help with local allergies so using like a local honey is going to be really good i also like to use agave or maple those are natural sugars that you can use either also cane cane sugar is another natural sugar that you can use and stevia those guys you don't know i grew a little bit of stevia i had a couple of stevia leaves and then i killed the stevia plant but having the few stevia leaves that I have is amazing because then I just throw it all up in the mixture and it sweetens and does everything that it needs while it's steeping and that's really nice. So stevia will actually be on my list of things to grow again this year. So what if you're that person that drinking a big hot glass of herbal tea is just not your thing? Then I suggest encapsulating your herbs. Um, I use a big giant mortar and pesto that I use to grind down my herbs or you can just use a regular coffee grinder too as well. 
I just went and grabbed my little mini chopper because sometimes I don't want to go through the laborious task of hand grinding my herbs and I will just throw them if I'm doing a big batch of something into my little mini chopper and then chop them down. So once they get to a good consistency where they're nice and pretty much like powder type, then you can go ahead and throw them into capsules. So these ones I use, they're just empty vegan cap capsules and you just fill them. You can use a little um, pill caps or pill capsulator or you can just put it in a paper towel, push them together and stick them back in while squeezing up the herbs. But these are an easy way for people that don't like to drink teas or they just want to take it quicker. So you can make your little herb blends and then put them in these and then you can say, here is something for your flu and cold symptoms. <laughs> also another great way is making tinctures. So just like we made the big batch of lemon balm tincture, I do like these little drops. So these little droppers let you measure out how much you're using. So these are very beneficial to have. So also not all herbs are something that you want to ingest. Some of them are going to be things that you use topically on your skin. So having these like little tens like this where you can put different salves in and they're easy for you just to scoop out are also really nice to have. Now also when it comes to storing your herbs, you wanna make sure that you're keeping them nice and dry. I do like keeping mine in these little types of containers. Also when you're ordering herbs, especially from companies like Star West, they're coming in Mylar bags. Mylar bags is another great way to um, keep your herbs nice and dry and to keep them for fresh for a longer period of time. The other thing I would suggest is you can do, especially if you're living in like a moisture climate or we always have a humidifier running in our house because our house is so dry, <laughs> that um, I use what's called these like little silicone gel um, things that you find like in like beef jerkies or different things like this. And I use the brand Wise Dry. Um, this one is a food grade brand and all you do is just take that and drop it into the containers with your dry herbs. I don't want to open up this one because once you open them up they activate and they try and collect all of the moisture out of anywhere that's going on. Um, the nice part about this one is that it has little activator um, colors so if it turns a different color then it'll let you know that you need to dry these back out. All you do is stick them in the oven and you can reuse them over and over again. So. I hope that that gives you guys kind of like an idea of what you can start getting together and things you want to start collecting in order to get your medicinal herb cabinet going and making sure that you have ways of administering those medicines that you are making in a nice safe way and that you understand what those different herbs do so that you know how to get nice herbs for yourself and also how to get them for your family and what combinations you should be doing. And those books have really great recipes on how to mix and match different things and just overall, you have a headache. These are the things you need, these are the parts you need, make a tincture, make a tea, there you go. So I hope that helps guys, I hope you guys are getting your medicinal cabinets ready and nice and stocked. If you aren't able to grow all of those different things, research the herbs that you're going to need. If you're having liver pain, make sure that you have something for liver pain in your medicinal cabinet. And if you can't grow those different herbs then or those roots, then make sure you have a place that you can get them from and get them early because just like everything else, <laughs> herbs online are starting to get a little bit harder to find and longer of a wait time because people are stocking their medicinal herb cabinets. And if you are gonna be growing these things, make sure that you get your seeds quickly because the same thing, seeds are in <laughs> a little bit of a shortage. So I hope that this video helped you guys out. I hope that you guys are getting your medicinal herbs together and starting your cabinets and just having your little cabinet of medicine so that you can treat your family safely and with something pure. So until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys.